South Yorkshire Police have been involved in some of the most notorious incidents in British policing, the worst being the cover-up following the Hillsborough disaster. Tonight, Dan Johnson re-examines the death of a football fan at a match here in Rotherham 16 years ago and his family's long search for justice. We just feel like he deserves justice as well. He didn't deserve to go to that match and he didn't deserve to die and we didn't deserve to grow up without a father. Is she also aware of the tragic case of Terry Coles, a Swansea City supporter who was trampled to death by a police horse at a football match in 2000? He kicked the horse on, you know, the horse g'd up, but the horse went faster. You know, it only took a couple of strides and, and he hit Terry. I think the real truth needs to be examined. Terry Coles, a father and a football fan who lost his life following his team. Terry died after being knocked down by a police horse here in South Yorkshire just minutes before kickoff. Swansea City were playing Rotherham United in the last game of the season. At Terry's funeral, his wife Christine and his two young children were joined by hundreds of football fans. Tell me a little bit about Terry for the people who don't know much about him. What was he like? Um, very sociable man, he enjoyed a game of football and he had two lovely children, his Natalie and Matthew. Um, that was his main sort of pleasure, supporting his team and unfortunately that was the end as well. But how how importantly did he, did he take football? He went to most home games and when he could go away he went away. And that's what Terry did on the 6th of May in the year 2000. It was a trip of more than 200 miles to Rotherham to cheer on Swansea City. The two clubs were fighting for the league title in what was then Division 3. There could have, should have been a carnival atmosphere, but it suddenly turned nasty. I went up with nine other friends. We went in a stretch limo. It was just another away day for us, uh, really, but with that heightened uh, expectation of winning the league. And separately, Terry travelled to Yorkshire with a group of his friends. We got to Rotherham, let's say about one o'clock, parked the minibus up, we, um, we all got together and we went to Yates Spa then, which is a, a little bit outside the, uh, st uh, just up from the stadium. Uh, we met there, we had a couple of drinks, um, there was police there and police horses. This is the shiny modern New York Stadium where Rotherham now play their games but they've only been here for the last four years. This is Millmore, Rotherham's former ground. Even though they haven't played here for eight years, it's still standing. But in the year 2000, when Terry Coles came here, it was already starting to show its age. This is the narrow lane that away supporters used to be funneled down. They walk a stone um, down High Street towards the stadium. Um, very uh, hostile um, reception all the way, you know. Unfortunately, it ended in a great uh, tragedy. Alan Roberts was a Swansea regular. As a young man, he'd been involved in hooliganism, but his life changed on the day of Terry's death. Alan recognised Terry from previous games. He found himself next to Terry in the congested alley. 16 years on, this is the first time he's been back to Rotherham. It's the first time he's spoken about what happened. When I arrived in this area, there was, there were people throwing stones at each other. As you can see, just around you, it's quite easy to dig a little stone up out, out of the ground. And that's what the Swansea fans are doing, retaliating to the Rotherham fans. who were throwing stones from there and there. So we got to the, um, the lane. Uh, that's where the problems occurred. There was, um, I think there was a pub, the Bee Garden, and um, people were throwing glasses from there. Just uh, give me a sense of what it was like then when you moved down here. Yeah, well, you know, I, I ran down here to get, a, to get away from all the trouble because, you know, I didn't want to get arrested. I'd been arrested previously at football. And I didn't want to get arrested anymore. What I do recall, though, is that when all this started happening, the police brought two police horses into that lane. It's easy with the benefit of hindsight to think about this, but I, I, I remember saying to my son, what the hell are they bringing these into a, la a, a lane with a lot of people in. He came in the top of the lane there and they were walking, the police horses, just normal, you know, walking. And then 
You could tell by the police officer's body language. He spotted something, he saw something, and he kicked the horse on. You know, the horse G'd up. I don't know what term they use, you know, the horse term, but the horse went faster. You know, it only took a couple of strides, and as I was turning back to see where the police officer was, it was impact. I was told to stop at the top of the lane. Um, at that point, I saw uh, the horse, or if I can recall, maybe two horses going down. Um, at the end, the police said, right, carry on. So we walked down. I got to the um, to the point then where I saw um, Mr. Coles was lying on the floor. Um, at that particular time, I was unaware what had happened. But um, obviously, um, word got around there from friends on the bus that said he'd been hit by a horse. It hit him backwards. He fell backwards, flat on the ground, sort of like that. And then the horse put its left front foot right onto his, his stomach. In the ambulance, he was under a lot of um, a lot of pain. Um, the the actual injury to his stomach was quite prominent because he kept uh, pulling his t-shirt up, and it, it it was obvious from then that he was in a bad way. You know, he was uh, in and out of consciousness and you know screaming with pain when he came round. Uh, so we went uh, went to hospital and. Um, and the rest is history, to be honest. After impact, the policeman tried to turn him. He turned him to the left. And it was difficult because there was people everywhere. You know, it was people all shouting at, at the police officer. People trying to grab the police officer, you know. People screaming, get his number. The horse's back legs were slipping on, on this. And you could hear them really, really loud. The hooves slipping, trying to gain traction. So I, I definitely think the horse was spooked, but after the event, before the event, no, the horse was just being normal, it was acting normal. I think as the phone calls progressed, you just felt it was getting more and more serious and he died of, you know, bleeding, external bleeding, and there was just nothing they could do. They, they tried their best to save his life, but unfortunately he died on the table. It's possible he just wanted to break up the crowd to try and stop the trouble. He didn't mean to hit anyone, especially somebody who was crouched down. Maybe he didn't see from up on the horse. I, I don't believe that because it's such a small space, you know, why would you bring a horse into such a confined space, you know? Yes, there was trouble, there was people throwing stones back and forth at each other. But would you charge a horse into people? Why would you do that? Shouldn't the fans who were here fighting that day take some responsibility too for yes. creating that situation? Yes, absolutely. Terry's family was asking questions too. The Police Complaints Authority asked another police force to investigate his death because Alan Roberts had thrown something at the police, and because he had a history of football violence, he was afraid to come forward. But a few days later, he spoke to West Yorkshire police detectives. Well, obviously I made my statement originally, uh, 16 years ago. I'll be honest with you, you know, because I threw the slate at the police officer, I was going through my mind, I'm going back to jail, and I'm going to incriminate myself, so I had a lot of thinking to do, but eventually my conscience overcame. Um, I think it was used at the inquest, but it was read out by, by someone else. I, you know, I wasn't invited to the inquest, so, which, which did surprise me, you know, because I gave such a, an accurate account, I believe, of, of events. Alan Roberts was never called to explain what he saw, and perhaps even more surprisingly, there was CCTV footage of the whole incident that was never shown to the jury. The family solicitor never even got to see it. It's something that's always disturbed Christine Coles. I think the jury should have had the opportunity to actually see for themselves what happened. Um, I actually viewed the tape and until this day I definitely say the horse went directly into his path. I think it was a, a deliberate act? I'm not saying deliberate but it was obviously loss of control during you know the policing of the match with a lot of witness statements backs that up to say that um, you know, it was out of control, the horses were travelling at a greater speed and, um, you know, the outcome. After a nine-day hearing here at Doncaster Magistrates Court, the inquest jury returned a verdict of accidental death. I think that they did focus a lot on the consumption of alcohol on the day and bad behaviour of the fans, but I think it was the actual policing and control of the crowds. And did you get the sense afterwards that they were trying to blame Terry, or at least? 
I think so because of the focus on the alcohol you know they they kept saying that he was four times over the drink drive limit but of course he was going to a football match he wasn't driving he wasn't causing any trouble and it did seem to be focused mainly on the alcohol the police officer riding the horse that hit Terry wasn't in court when the inquest jury delivered its verdict. PC Dave Lindsay released a statement offering his condolences to the Coles family. Like countless times before, on the day I was just doing my job to the best of my ability. What happened was an accident and I hope for the sake of everyone involved, something like this never happens again. The jury's accidental death verdict reflects the evidence given and the circumstances of the incident. Do you support what happened on that day? I regret the death of Mr Coles. I support the policing operation. So horses in a similar situation, horses would again be sent down Millmore Lane to control crowds? They may well be. There may never be an exactly similar situation. Christine Coles sued South Yorkshire Police but lost her claim for compensation. A review by the Independent Police Complaints Commission heavily criticised the horse rider, PC Lindsay, and two other officers. One of the match commanders, Superintendent Dave Turner, was given a written warning, but his colleague, Chief Inspector Paul Cropley, and PC Dave Lindsay had both retired by then, so there was no punishment. That could have been where it ended, but earlier this year, the BBC showed a documentary about the Hillsborough family's fight for justice, and that got the Coles family thinking again about what happened to Terry. They recently discovered two of the officers found to have failed in their duty over Terry's death had also been involved in the Hillsborough disaster of 1989. Both those officers, Dave Lindsay and Paul Cropley, gave statements after the Hillsborough disaster, talking about fans who were drunk and who didn't have tickets. Now that's the narrative that's been rejected twice first by Lord Justice Taylor's inquiry in 1989 and again by the fresh Hillsborough inquests that finished earlier this year. I watched the documentary and I found that really touching, you know, it was, it was so close to home that... Mm. And as they real saw, people affected, isn't it? Yeah, the way those families felt is exactly yeah. how we feel. How do you think South Yorkshire Police has treated you and your family? We never really had um, an apology and that would mean a lot and then perhaps you know this would never ever happen again i remember going out to the court that day and the chief officer shook my hand offered his condolences and stated we shan't be gloating over this which was sort of a funny statement to make and those words will always always stick with me for the rest of my life how did that leave you feeling i think they were relieved to be honest that that they had won the case and uh, I say we had the opportunity to take it to uh, an appeal court, but financially we weren't able to do so. The family's lawyer believes that because of the links to Hillsborough, they should now have the chance to look at all the documents and the CCTV evidence from the time. The findings in Hillsborough were so damning about some of the police officers involved in both cases. Um, I think it's sensible for the family to look at those, those problems that have been highlighted um, and see if they can get the answers that they want. Christine told us that she had seen CCTV of the incident, but then that wasn't presented at the inquest. Is that something that troubles you? Well, I, I can't understand why it wasn't presented at the inquest. It's such a key piece of evidence. It was available. Um, and I think that is something that the coroner will have to look at and maybe look at retrospectively that may adjust their decision. And last month, Terry Cole's case was raised in Parliament by the Shadow Home Office Minister and MP for Swansea East. The Home Secretary will be aware of continuing concerns about the historical conduct of South Yorkshire Police. Yeah. Is she also aware of the tragic case of Terry Coles? Would she agree to look at the evidence and accept that unless we have the truth about all these past injustices, we won't be able to restore trust in South Yorkshire Police? Yeah. Somebody has to take responsibility for what happened that day. Now, whether it is an organisation in terms of South Yorkshire Police for the way that they organise the planning of their police match, whether it's an individual, somebody made the decision that it would be policed in such a way and decisions were made on that day, with the consequence of that was Terry Coles lost his life. We need to find out what went wrong. You know, it was accident, waiting to happen. You know, there were 
there was women and children in that lane as well and unfortunately it was Mr Coles that paid the price. What sort of a, a lasting impact has it had for you? Has it oh, stuck with you? It's, I, I, it goes through my head at least three or four times a week. You know, I, I see it over and over and over and over, to be honest with you. It, it's never gone away. You know, I see it like it happened yesterday and just coming here today now, you know, it's had a, it's had a profound effect, you know, because it's just being back here is, it's, it's weird, you know, my, my heart is going now, you know, just thinking about Terry, like. It won't be able to move forward until we have uh, the full truth about Augury, about Hillsborough, about what happened in Rotherham, also, in terms of uh, the case of Terry, Terry Coles, you know, people need to know what happened so that we can uh, learn from the, um, from the past and bring people back together. And how do you feel South Yorkshire Police have responded so far? Um, not as responsive as I hoped because we did approach them back in May and we, we're still really waiting for an outcome from it or, you know, they've said they, they are considering the evidence but we just haven't had any sort of concrete response from them as yet. We asked South Yorkshire Police for an interview. They declined, but gave us a statement saying they're now working with the family's legal team to gain a better understanding of their concerns. The Independent Police Complaints Commission told us it has considered the case, but there are no plans to review the original inquiry. We just feel like he deserves justice as well. He didn't deserve to go to that match and he didn't deserve to die and we didn't deserve to grow up without a father. Just as Orgreave's different to Hillsborough, nobody's making a direct parallel with what happened here. But you've got a football match, you've got South Yorkshire Police and you've got officers' accounts of what happened at Hillsborough that are already being re-examined. So perhaps it was inevitable that fresh questions would be raised about what happened to Terry Coles.